I'm Dr. Simon Hazeldean, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist at the Afghanistan Hospital and I'm uh, the project lead for this alcohol project. I'm Dr. Robert Tate from the National Drug Research Institute and I'm primarily involved in uh, the evaluation of the project to uh, see how it goes. The, the real frustrating thing for me is seeing patients at the end stage of their um, illness there due to alcohol. They've been drinking for 10 or 20 years, totally unaware of um, the harm it's doing. And when they come in, in the end, the end stage liver disease or other alcohol related harm, there's, there's literally nothing we can do but support them. Uh, there's very little in the way of medical intervention that we can provide. So by trying to see these patients, give feedback early, I think that will have a greater impact on their outcome. So we know um, a third of the popu Australian population drink um, harmful levels of alcohol. Um, and this uh, project gives an opportunity to, for the patient as an individual and also um, as a uh, society to reflect on those um, excess uh, levels of alcohol consumption. Quite a lot of people we, we do provide the um, uh, alcohol screening and have a chat about their alcohol intake um, are quite surprised about how much they actually drink. They're also quite surprised on um, the category in which they're put in in terms of their moderate or high risk drinking um, behaviour. And it's really trying to get that message back to the patients to say, well, you are drinking at a level that can be potentially harmful for your, for your health and it's time to reflect on that um, and doing that early on in, in one's life has obviously greater benefit. So we're, we're providing them with a message in ED and then we're also uh, providing uh, a link to a GP to see if the GP can follow up with them because we know brief interventions work when they're delivered by general practitioners. We know that anywhere between 10 and 30% of ED um, admissions are alcohol related. Um, so for every two people that are um, screened again brief intervention, it results in a one fewer presentation to the emergency department in the following year. At the moment, when patients come into hospital, they are asked about alcohol and how much they drink. But this is using a structured way, as I say, three questions to give us a clear idea of how much one is drinking. If you're at low risk, then you can be reassured that, um, that that's a more healthy level of drinking alcohol. Um, but the moderate and higher risk drinkers um, will then be provided with feedback in terms of their alcohol um, intake. And they'll be following up with a, a few GPs to get their feedback on how if this is helpful, um, have they been able to start an alcohol rated conversation with the patient? What more information do they need? What form do they want that information in? So yes, the input from the GPs is going to be vital. I think by increasing the awareness and the profile of alcohol screening and brief intervention, it will hopefully change the culture within the emergency department to say that we know that alcohol is a major issue in terms of um, the number of presentations and uh, as individuals patients, it um, will definitely worsen their outcome if they continue to drink at risky levels. And there's been a lot of advertising recently about the effects of ice or methamphetamine uh, and potential for disruption in ED, but of course far more people are turning up in ED with alcohol related problems and have been just as disruptive as uh, many methamphetamine uh, mm. related cases. So. It's important that people are on board with um, trying to make uh, this intervention early on um, and to improve patient pathways, to improve um, the community services and also to give the GPs an opportunity to address this um, with the patients. I think uh, when patients are seen in the, in the primary care, often they, they come uh, with things unrelated to alcohol. Um, but let's bear in mind that there are multiple illnesses that are related to alcohol and if we can identify patients that are drinking at risky behaviours, it can cause cardiovascular disease, increase the rate of GI malignancies, hypertension, dyslipidemia, type 2 diabetes. There's multiple things surrounding alcohol um, excess that, we, that we're probably not addressing because of the time pressures within the primary care setting. And hopefully by getting increased awareness from the emergency department back into the community, it will give the GPs um, the opportunity to bring this up with the patient.